of the most scenic ballparks in all of baseball, PNC Park, the banks of the Allegheny in Pittsburgh. The Cardinals are 79 and 56 and running away with the Central Division. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. That's Al Dan. Delighted to have you with us. Game one of this three game series and all three games right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Al when you look at Pittsburgh lots of changes but the same result this team is struggling. It really is. They, they do have a magic number. It just is uh, three to avoid having their 17th consecutive losing season the most ever in professional sports. But you can see they just struggle. Whether it's pitching, whether it's offense, this team is really trying to find itself. They think they have a lot of prospects, but uh, they just haven't won here at this level. Now, one guy who is not struggling, Adam Wainwright, he's in the conversation for the Cy Young Award. Most definitely. He's the Major League's first 16-game winner, looking to push it to 17. He had the best ERA in all of baseball last month. But we're looking forward to this one. It's game one of the three game series between the Cardinals and the Pirates. We come to PNC and that means Albert's in the lineup. Great numbers in his career against the Pirates. First pitch lineups next. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser Select full flavor 99 calories the exception to the rule by Steak and Shake famous for steak burgers by Auto Tire for the lowest prices in town we shop the competitors so you don't have to buy Chevy see your mid-America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at stlchevy.com and by the state of Missouri tobacco quit line call 1-800 quit now it's a live look the scenic downtown of Pittsburgh the Clemente Bridge the folks walk across from downtown Pittsburgh over here to the ballpark in PNC You'll see a lot of red tonight it's a Friday night and that means it's a big football high school football night here in Pittsburgh Cardinals lineup Skip Schumacher Colby Rasmus Albert Pujols then Matt Holliday Ryan Ludwig Mark DeRosa Yadier Molina Brendan Ryan Adam Wainwright the pitcher batting 151 and the Cardinals will face a former Cub Kevin Hart and his record stands at four and four. First pitch to Schumacher lifted into deep left center field McCutcheon on the move he'll look up and it's off the wall Schumacher on his way to second base and he'll stop right there almost knocked it out of the park and that's the deepest part of the field to get right back out there by the Cardinals bullpen it jettisons back to 410 but Hart, as you mentioned came over from the Cubbies at the trading deadline he's one and three with the Cubs overall four and four very slow and deliberate worker has good stuff still trying to find the question mark is he better suited for the bullpen or the rotation so Schumacher a leadoff double for the Cardinals and for Skip that's his 32nd double of the season he leads the club in that category here's Colby Rasmus and Colby it looks like at least initially first two hitters be aggressive early against Hart yeah it sounds like it you know as I said he's very slow and deliberate so guess these Cardinal hitters don't want to be put to sleep but that can have a negative effect on your defense also they're back on their heels third baseman is Andy LaRoche she is a few steps in from third base anticipating a possible bunt it's 78 degrees here in Pittsburgh the 0 1 pitch no balls and two strikes Pirates have lost seven in a row but that was all in their most recent road trip they had yesterday off they are six games over 500 at home and they're 24 and a half games behind the Cardinals. Cardinals are 36 and 30 on the road and they own a 10 and a half game lead at the start of play tonight. There's the breaking ball that scoots away and Schumacher will advance as Dolman couldn't find it. So runner at third after the wild pitch and the Cardinals have something cooking here in the first inning. Well, you know if you jump out of team second division teams if you jump out on them and you know then it's very hard for them to catch up especially when they're playing an elite club like the Cardinals. And there you see boy we take it for granted at times how well the Cardinal catchers block balls in the dirt. But that is probably more of an indication of how poorly most other catchers are. Two balls and two strikes we have seen where some managers have elected to walk pools walk holiday and then load them up. Albert is on deck count of two balls two strikes 
Slowly hit out in front of the plate. Domit on it. Fires to first and fires wide. Cardinals lead it one to nothing. An air on Domit. And Colby Rasmus is headed to third. The throw in there he is not in time. He's safe. The ball scoots away, but he'll stay put at third base. Now, this is a team that has committed the fewest errors in the National League. Yeah, that's a, a good point, Dan. That's one thing that helps out pitchers, but Doman has already had quite a beginning of this game. The wild pitch was a lot of his fault. Then here he calls for this one and then throws it away. So, so no RBI. It's a three base error by the catcher. And Rasmus can pick him up and lay him down as he gets in third. So here is Albert Pujols. Remember last time we were in Pittsburgh? A fan fell out of the seats, Tim Tepes. And he apparently is at the ballpark again tonight. His son, it's his birthday. As Pujols a swing and a miss and a high delivery. But uh, Tim Tepes is here with his son who has Down syndrome and truly a, a connection with Albert Pujols a very touching story and actually the father had written a letter to Albert but uh, never mailed it he has done that since that time and carried it with him that night and apparently they are going to get together sometime this weekend they're from Buffalo New York but big Cardinal fans one ball one strike on Albert and Pat Paris who's on the road trip with us. We'll try to catch up with Tim Tepes. Pujols, as we've talked about, Al, he just destroys the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, and I, I believe this time the Tepes family are getting tickets from the Pirates. This has popped up on the infield as Pujols just throws his bat, frustrated there, and the catch is made by Garrett Jones. So, as we mentioned, this is a Pirates team defensively. Came into tonight having committed the fewest errors in the National League. Millage, McCutcheon, and Moss in the outfield. LaRoche, Cedeno, Delwyn Young, Garrett Jones on the right side, and Kevin Hart and Ryan Dome at the battery tonight. The Pirates defense is presented by Auto Tire. So, first out recorded, and here's Matt Holliday. Cardinals' magic number is 19. The Pirates' tragic number is 3. Tragic number, not tragic. the magic number. And that's three to have another losing season, which would be their 17th consecutive. 17th consecutive. That would set an all time record for U.S. professional sports. No one has had that many consecutive losing uh, seasons. 0 1 pitch to Holiday. And a strike. We were talking about how this pitcher really takes his time. Jonathan Papelbon. Was fined $5,000 by Major League Baseball for taking too long. Apparently, he had multiple fines throughout the year and warnings, and then finally, the big one was issued and charged for $5,000. And I think in his case, a lot of times it's just how much time it takes him to get from the bullpen to the mound and get ready to pitch. The 0 2 to Holiday. Swing and a miss. Holiday is swing and a miss and a strikeout. First strikeout for Hart. Well, Hart has better than than average stuff. And you can see right now retiring Pools and Holiday with a runner at third base. Show you why they are excited about him. And they paid a healthy price, Graybo and Orzolani to acquire him from the Cubs. He was tabbed by Baseball America as their sixth best prospect prior to the season for the Chicago Cubs. Here's Ludwig now with two outs. Ryan Ludwig this season, 266, 18 homers, and 81 RBIs. And this is the ballpark that he was hurt at earlier this year. We talked about that really stopping the flow of his season as he was getting things going sure. at that point. A hamstring injury. A lot of curveballs here in this first inning. One ball, one strike. And you kind of all wonder is the Cardinals all going up there, kind of looking and hacking on the first pitch, whether. There's a pattern of establishing the fastball in the first pitch before he works you over on that breaking ball. You shade him a bit to the right side, the 1 1 pitch. He hung that one down the left field line, and that ball is fair and off the wall. A two out double by Ludwig. 
to make it two to nothing Cardinals. Big pick me up for Ludwig right there picking up Pujols and Holiday and driving Rasmus in from third for the second run. As you described it well and accurately a hanging breaking ball and leaves it on the inner part of the plate. He just turned on that. He almost nearly had a home run. Now it's DeRosa hitting uh, 232, eight homers, 18 driven in with the Cardinals. We talked about it yesterday. It's been a while since we have seen him go deep. And we also, you know, we missed a couple days over the weekend with that wrist. And look at how they give him all the left field line as they swing around in the outfield, playing him towards right. You know that wrist is by him a little bit, but he's not using that as an excuse. Two outs, runner at second, 0 1 pitch. Well, here we have the Pirates going in one direction, the Cardinals another, and already a 2 0 lead. And as you uh, talked about, the fact is the Pirates are really struggling coming off that road trip, and the Cardinals went 7 and 2 on the homestand, and Wainwright on the mound tonight. Back of their minds, maybe here we go again. That's why you've got to jump out on top. When you play a club like the Pirates, the, one of the fears you have is you play down to their a level. And you, you know you're an elite team, you have the better pitching matchup, but you still got to play the game between the white lines. So the best way to remind the Pirates that they're the last place is to jump out on top. Yadier Molina on deck. The one two to DeRosa. Here it comes. Hits it sharply to LaRoche, the third baseman. Across the diamond over to Jones. Cardinals pick up two runs in the top of the first. And Wainwright going for number 17 this evening. John Russell and the Pirates, a record of 53 and 79. And they trailed after a half inning, two to nothing. Here's a look at his lineup this evening McCutcheon, Young, and Jones, Millage, Domit, LaRoche, Moss, Sedeno, and Hart. And they face one of the best in baseball, Adam Wainwright, looking for win number 17 tonight. Well, his first 16 game winner in the major leagues. His ERA is in the top five. And this is our Domino's first couple of pitches of the game. This guy is an exciting player, Andrew McCutcheon. Certainly a candidate for rookie of the year. Third among rookies in slugging percentage, fifth in batting at 284. Tied for third in RBIs, third in steals, he's got 15, fourth in runs, and total bases, and he's also hit 11 home runs. And they love his defense, too. Yeah, now he's a, a guy that has a lot of tools and appears to be a legit major league player. Schumacher makes the play over to Albert. Cardinals defense tonight, presented by Auto Tire. Start with the outfielders this evening behind. Adam, it's Matt Holliday, Colby Rasmus, and Ryan Ludwig. DeRosa, Ryan, Schumacher, and Pujols along the infield. And the battery tonight, Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. Cardinals defense presented by Auto Tire. Wainwright has the best ERA under two in night games in the National League. Delwyn Young looks at his strike. We've got a lot of young players, but do they have enough young talent. And I, I mean I'm going to kind of throw a question at you because it appears a team that or an organization is on the verge of having 17 consecutive losing seasons kind of seems a little bit arrogant in their attitude with a lot of the trades that they've made and like OK we're going to take like the Mets number one draft pick Millage a couple years ago. Out to Holiday for round number two. We're, we're going to take this guy because the Mets couldn't handle him. You know they trade him Washington. You know Washington rejects him, but we feel that we have the instructors that we can turn these guys around. You, you look at a lot of this, and it kind of doesn't just doesn't jive with a franchise that has lost 17 consecutive seasons. But how about the fact that there's really no older established veteran on this team too? Well, David Eckstein with San Diego made sense. Exactly right. I mean, 
it's a great example because you know you talk about uh, you know Eckstein going there because they want a role model. They have Vasquez here. He's 32 years old as their senior member, but he's a backup player. Garrett Jones rolls over on that pitch. And this this guy to me, Garrett Jones, is one of the more intriguing players. As Garrett Jones has hit 18 home runs to lead all National League rookies in 55 games. They call him the natural. You know, a few years back he he, he hit four home runs in a in a quad city or a quad cities in the Midwest League. He's had two walk off home runs this year, including the other day he hit the franchise 10,000th home run. That was in Cincinnati. Off a Homer Bailey. Yep. And and you know he's just a, a intriguing player and they say he's a pretty good athlete that has been bypassed from several organizations. Two and two. He had he had almost two thousand you know triple A at bats and really just had a little bit of time in 07 with the twins. But this might be a play. He's hitting 330 within the division too. Swing and a miss. Look to be a changeup that time by Adam Wainwright. That's something you probably wouldn't see down in the Triple A level. <laughs> well, there's, there is a big difference now, and you're right about off-speed pitches when you're behind the count. There's the curveball that time. That pitch at 75 miles an hour. So the first strikeout for Wainwright, two to nothing after one. 78 degrees, our game time temperature tonight. Beautiful night here in Pittsburgh. Two to nothing, the Cardinals have the lead. Yadier Molina, Brendan Ryan, and Adam Wainwright for the Cardinals. Shot looks like a painting, doesn't it? <laughs> Beautiful. This is a tremendous setting right here. A little smaller ballpark to accommodate their crowds. There's still a lot of empty seats. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I mean, when you were playing in the league, Pittsburgh had some great teams, great players. But even then, they had trouble. And they've had good teams. They had trouble filling their stadium. I remember even when uh, they were in the playoffs in the 70s and stuff, that they would never sell out a playoff game. Braves did that against the Cardinals, remember, back in 2000. Up the middle and a base hit for Molina. So the Cardinals are ready with three base hits. Brendan Ryan will be the hitter. Found it interesting how Tony La Russa used his lineup tonight, how he wrote it out as you get a look at the swing by Molina. This very well could be a playoff lineup that we're seeing tonight with Brendan Ryan hitting in the eighth spot, Rasmus in the second spot in front of Pujols, and then Schumacher, your leadoff man. I haven't discussed it with Tony, but in many ways, I, I think this has the most balance. This lineup that he's using here tonight, that it, you know, to me, I think it, it uh, with the right hander on the mound, it looks the best. If it works that way, we'll find out. Pulled foul by Brendan Ryan. Brendan this season hitting 287, couple of home runs, and 28 RBIs. I want to remind folks that we have all three games, including Sunday, right here on Fox Sports Midwest. About the fact that uh, Tony reg regretted pinch hitting for Brendan Ryan and even went up and told Brendan that I made a mistake in we, yesterday's ball game. We thought that at the time, too. We were talking during those pitching changes and all the different moves. Slowly hit and no go to first. Could have gotten the lead right. runner. See, that's just a. Ronnie Cedeno not realizing and thinking who's running it at first base, but he had plenty of time, even with the play right in front of him. The second baseman Young was there. As you watch Molina coming down here, they had the out at second base and he didn't take it. Wouldn't have got the double play, but you wouldn't have a, a man in scoring position right now. Wayne Wright, a couple of home runs this season, four RBIs. And hitting 151. He certainly can help himself. Schumacher on deck. Very good athlete, can do a lot of things, as you said, to help himself and help produce a win. But clearly, he could have gotten that lead runner on that play. Yeah, there's there, no doubt. There's no doubt about it at all. And anytime you can get the lead runner, 
you know that's what you should do but Sedano a veteran should know better than that Cardinals have won eight of their last ten road games and much of that is due to pitching opponents only hitting 226 over the last ten road games for the Cardinals and you go back to 04 when they were one of the best road teams in baseball and they've been playing like that now in the second half of this season Yeah, they picked up the pace on the road but it all starts with pitching and I sure liked what I saw from Wainwright in his first inning of work. And Lincecum pitched last night and his team lost. Yes. It's Pedro Martinez and oh. the Phillies. Yeah, he pitched well, but he did he get the, the loss in that game, I would think it was two to one. He might have gotten no decision. And Pedro, he's pitching well. well. Lincecum has the gaudy numbers and strikeouts, but with a win tonight, Wainwright would go two in front of Carpenter in that department. One ball and two strikes. Rounder hit into the hole. Wainwright can run at first, and he is out. Good play by Sedano in the hole and takes a hit away from Adam Wainwright. Schumacher doubled to start the game and scored the first run of this ball game. Long throw there and just gets Wainwright at the wire, but Molina goes on over to third. Outfield is shallow here for Schumacher. He put it off the wall. And a breaking ball that's taken down and in. Lincecum took the loss. He's 13 and 5 now. Martinez 3 and 0. Pitch in the dirt, but kept in front by Domit. Ludwig came came through in the first game with a two-out RBI base hit, and Schumacher do it here with two outs in the second. Cardinals and Pirates meeting this weekend. It's the last of their five series meetings in 09. St. Louis eight and four against the Pirates this far. They went seven and ten. I remember a year ago. Two balls and no strikes. Last year, remember the Cardinals had struggles against some of the weaker teams in baseball or in the National League. 2 0 pitch. Hoping Rasmus on deck. Always nice for Joe Pettini to come back home as he lives in this area. Cardinals bench coach. And Rich Donnelly, one of the coaches for the Pirates, they kind of live across the pond from each other. Up and in, and that's the second time that Schumacher has been aboard. Visit the official online shop of the Cardinals at stlcardinals.com for the largest selection of authentic postseason caps, t shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, and more. Get your playoff gear straight from the source, the stlcardinals.com shop. Colby Rasmus with runners at first and third, and two outs. Colby reached on a throwing error by the pitcher. And scored the second run for the Cardinals in that first inning. A lot of times, Tony La Russa will have his pitchers hold the ball and really bury up the looks that a base runner can get at first. And you wonder if that would be more difficult tonight against Hart, a guy that takes his time like this. He doesn't naturally. Play. Exactly. Third baseman is playing in on the grass. That's LaRoche. They'll hold it first. That's pulled foul. Right past Dave McKay. What do you think Kobe's chances are in the rookie of the year? It's a good question. You know, McCutcheon certainly is going to be in that conversation. I think some of the pitchers, too. Yes, and one of the things that hurts Kobe is he's playing so infrequently. Yeah. He is playing, and you know, you've got Jones who leads all rookies with the home runs. But one difference playing a last place club or playing on a first place team. And Colby has seen the bulk of the playing time lately. Colby does 
He is uh, second among National League rookies with the 14 home runs. He's tied for third with 44 RBIs. McCutcheon has what 45, 11 home runs and 15 stolen bases. Another ball in the dirt. You see that I think of Mike Matheny and he's with us on this road trip. Yep. It was nice to see Mike in the clubhouse and on this road trip. A little better as it used the glove to kind of block the area between your legs and you really just use your chest protector to try and stop the ball. Mike would like to coach or manage someday so of course he has a great relationship with Tony and the organization. Rasmus. Two first Jones is there in the Cardinals strand two. Midway through the second inning here at PNC Park, it's two to nothing. Redbirds on top. This season, both Mizzou non-conference games from Faro will be available on pay-per-view next Saturday, September 12th. The Tigers take on Bowling Green, and on uh, September 19th, they'll play Furman. And many video providers in our Cardinals viewing area will offer these pay-per-view games for $29.95. So don't miss a minute of the action. Mizzou squares off against Bowling Green on the 12th. And then on the 19th, they'll play Furman. And call your cable or satellite provider to find out more and sign up. Mizzou and the Fighting Illini tomorrow. This is Lasting's Millage. No balls and two strikes. As football is here. And they know it all too well here in Pittsburgh. The Pirates really have fallen off the landscape of sports. Here in town with the losing seasons, the success of the Steelers and the Penguins just winning the Stanley Cup. Even Pitt basketball. At one point they were number one in the country. Here's an example of the Pirates feel that they can turn around Lasting's Millage. Remember he was a number one draft pick, 12th overall pick in the 95 first year player draft by the Mets. They acquired him from the Nationals. And he hits a liner that's fair. Down into the corner, Holiday over to get it, and Millage has the first base hit tonight for Pittsburgh. A lot of people question his ability. Drafted as one of the top players, amateur draft picks, but you know, that was a long time ago, and he really has been a disappointment now in his third organization. And they say he's a horrible outfielder, has no power. Doesn't uh, you know maybe his best assets is a little bit faster and those shoes really don't look good on a last place club. Jim and Lori O'Dell from Centralia, Illinois, here tonight, rooting on the Redbirds. Here's Domit the catcher. And how things have changed for the Pirates since opening day too. He's one of the few that still be around. Maybe because when they're doing most of their training, he was hurt. From their opening day lineup, they have four guys that are still with Pittsburgh. There's a base hit by Bonnet. Runners at the corners and nobody out. Niger Morgan is now with Washington. Freddie Sanchez in San Francisco. Nate McLeod, who was an all-star last year, he's in Atlanta. Adam LaRoche with Atlanta. Jack Wilson with the Mariners. Runners at first and third. Two to nothing Cardinals here in the bottom of the second. Millage had to wait on that ball, didn't he? Seemed like he would have a better read as he could see the height of it, and that ball, no infielder was going to catch it. But just advanced 90 feet. And that pitch is taken low and away by LaRoche. Andy LaRoche, the third baseman, who is hitting 245, seven home runs, 46 RBIs. Shade him to pull in center field just a bit. Tied him up. It's popped up. Yachty's got to play and puts it away for the first out. Another aspect of Wainwright, Carpenter, and Pinheiro. How many times have we seen them get out of jams like this? And certainly, he's still got a lot of work to do, but he's able to do it. Just five for his last 45 after this jam shot, but the art of pitching—it's not necessarily 
can you keep anybody from getting on base. The really the true artists are the ones that when they get into a jam is when they really shut down the opposition and don't let them have that big inning. They get one off them but you don't get the crooked numbers. Moss hitting 244. I don't think there's any doubt we've seen Wainwright use his breaking ball much more this season. Now the velocity at the beginning of the year we kind of questioned it because it wasn't as high as 94 95 but recently he has been hitting that that mark with his fastball. Early in the season you know you got to throw the fastball more to build up the arm strength and the velocity. And a lot of times you know we kind of and maybe he even lost a little confidence in his fastball he was reluctant to go to it. The friendly competition amongst the starters kind of even were kidding him but they were trying to make a point is hey don't lose fact of that good fastball you have. The Cardinals with the big three since July 1st the big three being Carpenter Wainwright Pinheiro they're 31 and four when those three make the start since July 1st. It gives you a pretty good chance that you, know, you come to the ballpark saying these guys are there we're going to win. Yep. And that's going to be the philosophy of this team. 2 1 now 2 2 big swing and a miss by Moss. Don't forget Pinheiro when we keep on talking about Wainwright and Carpenter and what they've done. Pinheiro has been just as impressive and you don't hear much of his conversation because the other two dominate him. But uh, anytime he takes the mound his teammates expect him to win. Carpenter the National League Pitcher of the Month for August he went five and oh. ERA just over two. First time he's ever gotten that award. There's a strikeout for Wainwright and that's his second of the night. So he's one out away from getting out of this jam. That's what we're talking about. You know when you get that first and third nobody out you got to really shut down. So you get a pop up and then you get two strikes on on Moss you go for the strikeout. And that's the whole key. You know he's got two thirds of the way but don't let up now because Sedano is the course of his year you know he's just batting over 200 204. You have the pitcher on deck. What's interesting too about statistically looking at Wainwright's season at home at Bush Stadium 16 starts he's seven and six but his ERA is under two on the road this year 12 starts he's nine and one. Yeah. With the higher ERA. Right. And Much higher. Molina just going out there to tell him about Daniel at the pitcher spot on deck. But the mindset of Wainwright is okay I've got that file in the back of my mind but I'm going to go to attack this hitter and then I'll have the pitcher spot up you know for the first out next inning. I think part of that conversation was to say look pitchers on deck. You don't have to give in to Sedano. Well, Sedano has been kind of swinging the bat well of late 368 his last nine games surprisingly 438 hitter with runners in scoring position. Molina setting up inside hits his spot pulled foul one ball one strike. You pitch inside like that remember he, he popped out in the Roche on a similar pitch there he gets in the kitchen of Sedano for the foul ball. But as a hitter all of a sudden you, you're consciously inside will he repeat that come back in or is he going to go away. But if I dive across the plate then you know what happens if he comes inside they're going to throw a curveball. It's exactly what you're talking about right there. You know you can't get into a pattern you know say OK inside then away. So to just keep that hitter honest all of a sudden you got to repeat another pitch inside and sometimes the guy hits himself. This is the cutter. Two one. Walking him is it the worst thing in the world here. Not the worst thing but. Uh, you know it's almost too easy at times just to sit there and say OK pitcher on deck you know give in to it. You're giving in to a guy and you know great competitors don't like to give in to anybody. Now they're cutter. And he walks to Daniel, so that's his first walk he's issued. Base is loaded and Kevin Hart will be the hitter. Kevin Hart is a all conference first baseman in college at Maryland. He's got a couple of RBIs this season and he's four for 16.
Hart is from Plano, Texas. 6'4", 220 pounder. First team all ACC at first base at Maryland. So at least at the college level he could swing the bat. Yes. Starting him off with a breaking ball too. Last season he was a member of the Cubs opening day roster. Had four different stints with Chicago. And 21 appearances. 1 0 pitch. Popped up. And Wainwright is going to get out of this jam. The Pirates had first and third. Nobody out. Andy LaRoche was the first man to do some damage. He couldn't do it. Then the strikeout of Brandon Moss and Hart, the pop out. Two to nothing after two. Big bats coming up with the cards. Saturday afternoons are made for baseball, and this week Fox brings you the national game of the week. Pablo Sandoval and the Giants battle the Brewers. Game that San Francisco needs to, in order to keep pace in the wild card race. Red Sox, White Sox, the other game. Three central only on Fox. Two nothing Cardinals, top of the third. Pools, Holiday, and Ludwig. Three, four, and five for the Redbirds. Albert popped out to first with a runner at third and nobody out. His first time up. Right now in the wild card, Colorado leading San Francisco by a game. And Atlanta, Florida, those two teams, four games back. Chicago, six, and now Milwaukee, eight and a half games back. One oh pitch to pools. Cardinals really could have a big say in the wild card. They've got yes. games at Colorado at the very end of the season. At Colorado and of course. Pools. This is his one of his favorite ballparks when he's outside of. St. Louis Cardinals have. Three with Atlanta when we come back home, and then right after that, three with Florida. So they could make a say and make a stance, and uh, what happens in that wild card? Just second time tonight we've seen him chase that pitch chase up. Chase the ball up, where Albert usually is so good at keeping the ball, uh, you know, level swing on that. And Albert, highest average at uh, Pittsburgh ballparks. Piazza had the highest average at Three Rivers and Bill White at Forbes Field. Long way to go for McCutcheon, but he's got great speed. Makes the catch on the run. Good example right there of that fine speed that he has. He was playing deep with who holds up. Playing deep, but a ball like that has to be caught, and McCutcheon in his speed allows him to get underneath it. See Sedano going back, but he pulls up quickly as. McCutcheon called him off with about 10 strides to go. And they say McCutcheon is, in many ways, one of the leaders of this team already. And he hasn't been in the league for a full <laughs> year. No. Holiday struck out his first time up, almost lost the grip on the bat, strike one. How about the fact that, you know, he's only been in the in the organization for a month plus. For the Atlanta Braves. Came in the. No. And no, Holiday you're right. Taps one foul. Who am I thinking that they got in the. Uh, in the McClough trade. McClough. He's been in the organization since 05. McClough and he was their. Number one draft pick 11th overall. Here comes an 0-2 pitch. Charlie Morton, I think. Does that sound right? It does. They've made so many trades. We had Corky's Hernandez, who's a center field prospect. Yeah, that's the guy they really like him. And then Charlie Morton came in the McCluth deal. And also Jeff Locke. Who's a left-handed starting pitcher? Oh, 
gets it out of play. Talking about how this organization is very happy with and think that they now have the right you know, instructors at the minor league and major league level. But, you know, how the Cardinals bring the Hall of Famers in. The Pirates invite Bill Mazeroski, a Hall of Famer, but to call the and Manny Sanguian. Be spring training. They say the first meeting they have of the year is the general manager and John Russell will talk to the new team and they'll say these guys over here and we're trying to get to where they've been. You know, talk to those guys and find out. But the general manager and manager never talk to those guys and ask them what did you have to do to get there. Sure. Here's a one two. Count even now as Holiday held up. 17 years, how do you change it? I mean, they have tried all different kinds of ways. They got their new ballpark. They were unsuccessful. They were building up to have a good team when they moved into this park. And some of the signings were questionable, no doubt. Jason Kendall for $60 million. Hit it at deep center. McCutcheon is back to the wall. He'll leap and it's gone. A home run to center field by Matt Holliday. He's hit another number 11 with the St. Louis Cardinals and Holiday picks up his 38th RBI and the Cardinals have the lead three to nothing. 22nd overall home run 92nd overall RBI. Had hit it to center field and high wall out there McCutcheon goes back and it's in the backdrop just beyond his reach but there's no way you're going to be able to reach up and take a home run away. Big blast off the bat of Matt Holiday. Here's Ludwig who doubled his first time up. Picked up the RBI, his 82nd. What an impact this guy has been, Matt Holiday. Had three hits and a home run yesterday. It's now 11 with 38 RBIs. And Ludwig smokes one out to deep center. McCutcheon is back to the wall and it's gone. The Cardinals go back to back. Ludwig with number 19. He has a double and a home run tonight and a pair of RBIs. Four to nothing, Cardinals. And they say if you hit him to center field, they earn him. <laughs> it's a deep park. It's a deep park. Holiday, the breaking ball, but it's a hanger right up over the middle of the plate. Hits it to dead center field. Almost the same pitch, but a low ball hitter, more of a low ball hitter for Ludwig, and he drives it over the right field or center field wall. They're having a little fun in there, aren't they? Sure are. Four nothing Redbirds. They picked up two in the first, and now two here in the third. DeRosa grounded out to third first time up. Four run lead with Wainwright on the mound. You feel good about that? You just like to see this team just keep on charge. You know, play hard, play the game all the way through. And then, you know, like you say, everybody do their part. Defensively, you make the plays. Offensively, you keep on scoring runs. And you got a pitch. One and two. Really limited duty this year at times for Ludwig as well and still 19 home runs and 83 RBIs. He's going to have a shot at 100. Breaking ball a good pitch and DeRosa frozen. Second strikeout for Kevin Hart. You can see two 20 game winners and 300 RBI men. Cardinal fans, when it comes to tickets, you deserve Major League Service, so go online to StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals and the only site with Fan Protect Guarantee. Alina singled up the middle first time up. He shoots this one to deep right. That is slicing, and that ball is just foul. Alina had a couple of doubles in one game in that series against the Brewers. Doing most of his damage to right field. 
since the holiday deal July 24th the Cardinals a major league best 27 and 10 27 and 10. And Holiday, of course, collected his 1,000th career hit yesterday. Talk about a surreal setting. That moon just doesn't even look real, does it? Nope. People ask us all the time our favorite ballparks, and this, no doubt, is one of them. Has to be in top five, I would say. Holiday weekend and some of the boats out at the uh, Allegheny just parked right there in the water and well, right behind the stadium. One of the nicest days we've had here in many years. Well, you know it's going to rain at some point. <laughs> it can't be Pittsburgh without rain. I flew in today and uh, met a nice gentleman who said hello to me, Frank Kelly from uh, Rock Hill, Connecticut. And he and his son, they say he watches games all the time. So, so give us a shout out. 2 2 pitch. The check swing. So that's all you got to do. You gotta just have to fly with you and hand all a right. card and you get the shout out. So Frank, Janice, Ed, Lauren, Bill, Heather, longtime Cardinal fans from Connecticut. First back to back home run since July 21st at Houston. That was Ludwig and DeRosa. Ludwig part of this one tonight. 3 2 to Yachty. It's the second walk the Cardinals have received tonight. It brings in Brendan Ryan. Brendan grounded out to short. First time up. And that's leading Chicago tonight. That's one to nothing in the third. Florida 4 to 2 over Washington in the second. And Cincinnati out to an early lead against Atlanta. That's also in the second, 1 to nothing. Big fantasy draft last night for the Cardinals. Molina is running. Throw down to second, and he's in there safely as the ball scoots away into center. That is something else. His eight steal and ten attempts. And once again, catch the ball. Catch the ball. He couldn't advance, but Young trying to apply the tag without having the ball. Albert leads the ball club in steals, and and now that's. Uh, it's what one away from uh, Brendan Ryan. Brendan's He's got nine steel. Yep. Take a look at McCutcheon here as he was backing up the play. Remember, it's one of my pet peeves is that center fielder rarely ever moves until after the ball, you know, gets by. But you saw McCutcheon coming in. As long as that ball isn't deflected left to right, you know, that guy shouldn't be able to get up and and advance. Popped up right side and out of play into the seats. Holiday has 14 steals, but uh, that's not all with the Cardinals. So eighth stolen base this year for Molina. So I said eight out of ten. And you know, for the guys have been here all year, Albert has 14, Brendan Ryan has nine, and Molina has eight. And eight out of ten. It's not like he's no. trying to do this all the time. You have to be a smart player with his speed to do that. Remember. Uh, Tom Pagnazzi one year was trying to uh, get to 10 steals and I think he got thrown out about six times in succession. <laughs> <laughs> the culmination of about three of them in, in Chicago but he was trying to get to double figures. Tim Matt. McCarver Tim McCarver if I'm not mistaken has the Cardinals record for steals as a catcher and Timmy could run. Matt Pagnazzi could be called up. Yep. You would believe that. Uh, the Memphis ball club they're in a battle trying to get into you know, their pennant race currently I think I have a half game to lead 2 2 to the Cardinals shortstop Ryan in the air right center field McCutcheon makes the catch on the run 
Cardinals go back to back and they add to their lead. With the Cardinals, number 11 for Matt Holliday. Deep Love it with number 19. Four nothing. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And by the Casino Queen Hotel and Casino, home of the Lucy Slots. Top of the lineup, Andrew McCutcheon leads it off. First pitch is strike by Wainwright. As we move to the bottom of the third, Cardinals with two runs in the first and two in the third with back to back home runs and a four run lead. Our keys to the game presented by Toyota. And a look at the rookies, Jones and McCutcheon, and what they've done this year. McCutcheon did not start with the club. Brendan Ryan quickly over to first to get the speedy McCutcheon. Boy, he flies down the line. Boy, and that's a great example. We'll just watch him run. And that'll get our attention in a very positive way. And we could have a young player see a player hustling like that. How about that speed? That's why you hustle. Hustle. Yes. yes. Show it off. Delwyn Young, 0 for 1, flied out in the first. To the left fielder tonight, Matt Holliday. One thing with Wainwright, you can pretty much pencil in six innings. 26 consecutive starts. Adam has thrown at least six innings. Trying to become the first 17 game winner in baseball tonight. His ERA third best in the National League. If you want to go even further, his night ERA is under two. Yeah, the best in the National League. And what he's done lately, that ERA is just over one. Had the best ERA in the month of August. And Carpenter won the, you know, the player, the pitcher of the month. One-one pitch, and a ground ball that's backhanded by Pujols. He can stay with it. Wainwright covering for the second out. Come watch the Cardinals take on the Braves Saturday, September 12th, and receive an All Star pennant featuring your 2009 Cardinals All Stars Albert Pujols, Ryan Franklin, Yadier Molina, and of course, manager Tony LaRusso. All kids 15 and under receive the pennant courtesy of Coke and the Pasta House. For tickets, visit STLCardinals.com. Garrett Jones struck out his first time up. Wainwright is struck out too tonight. Good pitch, but doesn't get the call for ball one. Cardinals starting staff has worked nearly 850 innings this season, which is tops in the major leagues, and that is such a big factor. Of course of a long season, you think about making sure that your bullpen is fresh. It's the only way it can be. You know, when you have good starting pitching and a good bullpen. A lot of it starts with that starting pitching going deep enough in games to where that bullpen isn't overused. Two balls, one strike. The starters have an ERA that's second best. And also they lead in wins 62 this year. Jones hits it sharply the other way and Brendan Ryan was playing towards the middle a little shift on for Garrett Jones. Two out base hit last nine games one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Ten for thirty four but you see the four home runs and six RBIs in those last nine games so the power numbers have been there. Yeah, he's hit ten home runs in twenty seven games here at his, his home ballpark. So maybe because of that you know you. He had to shift on the infield. Brendan Ryan playing up the middle, thinking he's going to be more of a pull hitter here. But good hitters use the, all the playing field, and he gets the base hit to left. Millage with his yellow shoes looks at a strike. Now they do match the yellow P. 
They would looked very. They used. They would have looked great with the canary yellow softball jerseys that uh, the Pirates first displayed in the 70s. Chopper up the middle, and everybody safe as Schumacher. Maybe caught in the middle of trying to get to it, make the play, either step on the bag or deciding whether or not to go to first with a throw. I think you're exactly right, Dan. Is you know the concentration as you come over here, you're gonna have to try and backhand it. You've got the second base bag comes into play as you're almost like looking at there and tripping over the bag. And one of the rare errors for Schumacher in his first year converting from the outfield to second base. He's had a remarkable defensive season, maintained that 300 average, and you know, I think everybody that he has exceeded everybody's expectations for his first year playing second. So that's his eighth air he's committed. Shaking his head out there, but uh, he has played very, very well. And that's it. You know, he expects to play at such a high level that that, you know, is a, is a play he wished and thought he should have made. Pick off. Ryan sneaking in there, trying to get Garrett Jones. Two outs, runners at first and second. Daylight play. You know, you back there, it's sort of a timing play. You see the separation between Brendan Ryan and the runner. And as a pitcher, you spin and throw and throw it right over the bag, and it's the infielder's responsibility to be there to catch it. Hitting a buck 88 with runners in scoring position. Millage at first, Jones a runner at second base. Pirates trying to get on the board here in their half of the third. Now his career average with runners on is 305. This year he has struggled in this spot. He's got a little pop too. He's got eight home runs. Eighth in his brief history at PNC with 28 home runs. Albert has about that many, doesn't he? Seems that way, if not more. Yeah, I mean, Albert probably would rank in the top five of pirate players if he was a pirate player. And a ground ball that Schumacher has to range to his left, spins and throws, and makes a fine play. Pirates have stranded five in the first three innings. Adam Wainwright leads it off when we come back. Of course, this is a play that many folks remember here. A flashback to August 7th, and that fan, of course, was injured reaching for the ball. And they were very, very scared about his neck, as you saw there. This the blood was gushing from his forehead, and that fan would wind up being okay, and Albert Pujols was over to help. And Pat Paris is standing by with that gentleman that was hurt. I am, uh, in fact, Dan. It's uh, it's Tim T. Pass and his son Keith. And uh, Tim, I'll start with you. A scary moment. I'm, I'm sure that uh, it was very confused uh, days a little bit. But Albert Pools is over to help you out. Yeah, I, I looked up the number five was written on the, the game cap. I knew <laughs> I could tell from his voice too who it was, and I was just a little. Days, but I, I knew I wasn't in big trouble or anything. Right, but Albert kind of uh, took over as a medic of some sorts and kind of made you stay down on the ground for a while. Oh yeah, he definitely. He's, I wanted to get up and get back in my seat. I'm like thinking I don't belong out there on the field. <laughs> I better get back before security comes and takes me away. But uh, he he felt like my neck really got wrenched and uh, and I thought okay, precautionary. I'll stay down here. I'll do what they say. And the. The fact that you want to meet Albert Pujols, well, you didn't want to meet him that way, obviously. You know, no, you know what? I really, I said that, but I really wanted Keith to meet him. I really, it, it's not a big thing for me, and I just kind of said that, but me, kind of like nervous, whatever. Like I didn't, you know. <laughs> so that that was really, I, you know, and, and he did send Keith an autographed baseball. Right, and Keith uh, just turned 21. You were celebrating his birthday that right. day. Yeah, it was an actual birthday was Thursday, but there was no games in Buffalo, no baseball games, so we came down here because his uh, softball team is St. Louis. That's 
the real reason why we're right. wearing St. Louis colors is because this is his third year on the St. Louis softball team, right? Right, and you're a, you're a fan of Albert Pujols, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you love the Cardinals. I saw when uh, when Matt Holliday hit the home run and Ryan Ludwig hit home run, nobody was cheering louder than you. Uh, there's a the ball that far he can hit. Yeah, they can hit. There's no doubt about that. The uh, the experience to have the Pirates then invite you back down there must be special. Well, yeah, I, I felt really neat because Frank uh, Coonley called me up, gave me his private cell number, invited us to come back. He, I think one of these batting practices, we're going to be in the he invited us into the dugouts. Great. You know, so that that'd be really neat. You know. Well, I'm glad to see there are no lingering effects from the uh, the, the facial lacer facial lacerations. <laughs> little little bit of a scab and a scar, I suppose. Yeah, my forehead's still. Uh, Recovering, uh, but uh, you know I feel fine. It, it never hurt, other other than when they put the strap around it when it was still all uh, raspberries. <laughs> well, Albert uh, did uh, a great thing in helping you out, and I know that uh, you wanted to meet Albert and you wanted to uh, to let him know uh, exactly what you felt about Albert and the fact that he has a child that has Down syndrome as well. Yeah, we, we sent him a letter. Keith thanked him for the ball that he sent him and uh, helping me during my injury. And then I had uh, already composed a typewritten letter, and I, but I, had, I had procrastinated a little bit, but I sent it off with that thank you note. Said a thank you note to Frank Coonley too with the Pirates. Well, Tim, uh, I'm glad everything turned out all right, and I'm glad you're going to get a chance to uh, maybe take some time to actually thank Albert and uh, great for your son as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that and uh, and thank Frank too. I haven't met him yet. All right. So, or well, other than the time on the field when I didn't <laughs> have much uh, to say, whatever. Uh, yeah, I am looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to a great weekend of baseball. We love right. baseball. Love the Cardinals, too. we got to go to break. Uh, we are going to continue here with Cardinal baseball at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Four-nothing Cardinals. Great job there uh, with Pat uh, Paris and the Tepes family here in attendance tonight. Oh. Wonderful to see that he's okay and they're enjoying baseball tonight. Really nice gesture too, Al, by the uh, Pirates. Yes, and they ain't practicing their dugout. I'm sure a lot of people come over and say hello to him. And you know Perry Hill, the Pirates' first base coach, was very helpful and saw that Albert would take care of Dad pretty much, and then Perry kind of made sure that Keith, his son, was uh, you know not freaking out, seeing his father there and. So everybody involved looked uh, did a great job. It's a strikeout number three for Wainwright. LaRoche is 0 for 2. This November, trained to be an umpire at the 2009 MLB Umpire Camp at Baseball's Youth Academy in Compton, California. Classes and on field instruction by Major League Supervisors and former big league umps with over 200 years of combined experience. Go to this website. WWW.MLBUC.com. MLBUC.com. You too can be just like Angel Hernandez. Moss struck out his first time up. Oh, I think you might have to grow into that. <laughs> <laughs> You've known Angel a long time. I'm not, you know. Only as a broadcaster, he wasn't around when I was playing. Well, you've been doing this a long time. Yes, but you you kind of get to know him because it seems like uh, during the course of a game, wherever Angel is, whether he's behind the plate or particularly on the bases, see something will happen to where his name gets mentioned. Three balls oh. and a strike on Brandon Moss. Cardinals with two home runs in the third inning, and that added to their lead after they scored two in the first. 4 nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Wainwright trying to come back after falling behind three balls and no strikes. Now the count runs full. The big three have been remarkable for the Cardinals when you talk about Carpenter, Wainwright, and Pinheiro. And you really have to, you know, really force yourself mentally. You have hit in the air down the left field line. Holiday over and runs out of room. And also there is runs out of room as you said that stands closing in there but you know, with lack of atmosphere here not a big crowd the Cardinals are so accustomed to playing such a terrific environment that days like this you really have to push yourself mentally. 
lot of clubs, you know, will struggle playing down to someone else's level. And that's, I think, where Tony and his staff do a great job of keeping and elevating the players. 3 2 pitch in the air, backing up the shortstop. Brendan Ryan makes the catch in front of Holiday. Hilton St. Louis at the ballpark, the only hotel that gives you home field advantage and an extraordinary Cardinals baseball experience. For reservations and info, number to call 314 421 1776 or visit HiltonStLouis.com. Moss retired two away and it brings in the eighth place hitter, Cedeno. Walked his first time up, that loaded the bases for Kevin Hart. And Hart would pop out to Schumacher to end the uh, threat for Pittsburgh. Last series here at PNC Park, it was Carpenter, Wainwright, Pinheiro in that series, and they went 3 0. Beautiful breaking ball for a strike. Also, Pujols and Holiday had three big games, seven RBIs, and six runs in those games combined. Here's the 0 2. And a swing and a miss. Strikeout. Wainwright with his second in the inning. Four in the game. Pujols, Holiday, Ludwig all coming up. It's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. Deep center. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. So here we go, top of the fifth, Albert Pujols. 0 for 2 tonight. He's popped out to first and also flied out to center. Holiday on deck and then Ludwig. Cardinals lead it 4 to nothing. In the third, they went back to back with home runs by Holiday and Ludwig. One and one. When the Cardinals and Pirates get together for the last series of a season. The Cardinals find themselves usually ahead in the standings. Back in 2004. 05, 06, and 09. The Cardinals were in first place. Pirates were in last. They start tonight 24 and a half games back. A common theme, isn't it? Cardinals ahead by at least 20 games in all those years over the Pirates. Pirates in last place, Cardinals in first place. And as you said, the margin just vast, minimum of 20 games. One year is 34. It was 2005. Pujols breaks his bat, hits it up the middle. Sedano spins and throws wide. It'll be a base hit for Albert, who's now one for three. Shatters the bat, but was well placed. Sedano a little bit more in the hole, right back over the mound. He gets to it, spins and throws. It's wide, but. Jones holds on to it. No further advancement on the infield single. Holiday, his 11th home run, back in the third. Out to center field. We mentioned that Albert and Matt, 11 for 23, seven RBIs and six runs. Back in the last series here at PNC Park. Short lead at first by Pujols. And Holiday hits it out to right field. Catch made, one away. Ludwig already with a big night. RBI double in the first. And his 19th home run in the third as he went back to back with Holiday. Back to back, see so you break the ball down and in. And this one is just rifles it out there just to right center for. His 19th home run. There's two more RBIs. He's up to 83. Ludwig in the air out to deep left. Millage back. He'll look up and it's off the wall. Pujols on his way to second base. And a three hit night. 
for Ryan Ludwig with that double off the wall. Third double by the Cardinals, two of them off the bat of Ludwig. Well, he's swinging the ball, or swinging the bat very well. Ball just jumping off his bat over the head of Millage. Plays the carom perfectly, gets it back in. And here's Mark DeRoso. Infield is coming in now. They shade DeRosa to right field. Big gap near left center, and he could pull one. Be perfect down the line. He won't need to. That's a base hit. Pujols can walk on home. DeRosa with his first RBI of the night and first base hit. Five to nothing, St. Louis. Versus 69th RBI. We really have not seen the hitter that DeRosa is because of that risk but this guy you know we're fine I think he'll become clutch as you get into postseason his defense has been very good and what a great presence he is in that clubhouse not only have the Cardinals acquisitions been really solid individuals great players but they are really good people and it, it really shows and fits fit so easily in this clubhouse. Molina slowly hit chance at two there's the double play that ends the inning for the Cardinals but they pick up another run five zip midway through five history brought to you by Schnooks back in 1978 in his first major league at bat the Pirates Dorian Boland strikes out sitting on the bench after being replaced by Rennie Stinnett with a one two count. And the reason why the Mets apparently brought in a reliever in the middle of the at bat, so they countered with a new hitter. It was back in 1978. It's a little tough, isn't it? On both ends. Kevin Hart is the hitter. Pirates trail 5 0. They're half of the fifth. First pitch by Wainwright, a strike. Hard here and then McCutcheon on deck and then Delwyn Young. The 0 1. I have nothing and Kevin Hart staying in the game to hit here. I guess if you're going to be a Starting pitcher, you got to eat up some innings. Some of the bullpen guys stretching out there, but no one throwing yeah. for the Pirates. I guess if you're John Russell, too, you're trying to figure out exactly what you have in him, too. Sure. And as I said, some people think that he is best suited for relief. There's another broken bat, Schumacher. To his right to make the play. Kevin Hart retired, and it brings in Andrew McCutcheon. Kerrigan, the pitching coach for John Russell. One of the bugs are becoming a problem on the field. I saw Schumacher looked like he was spraying bug spray, and then some of the players are watching them just even up here, just waving at the right in front of their face as if there's some bugs in their way. And see him here in the dugout, and you always got to bring your bug spray, your tough skin, and your bug spray. Oh. Tough skin. A lot of times, sometimes you know, a guy uh, maybe has a blister problem. Maybe he's defacing the baseball. Oh, that, that's <laughs> it, huh? <laughs> you know. It's, Hey, you're in last place. Try whatever. McCutcheon is 0 for 2. Pat Paris is with us on this uh, road trip. And nice interview, Pat, with uh, the fan that was injured before. But uh, you've got more now on the Bucks. Waiting, as I was waiting for Tim 
T pass and his son Keith to uh, to join me over there as you see a single up the middle. The bugs were everywhere and the fans were even the pirate fans were saying that they don't remember bugs being a problem like this They're little gnat looking things they are not very big but there are a lot of them and I guess they're attracted to the bright lights of PNC Park. So we're not seeing anything. There's no no there are bugs down there a couple of the batters I, I, I saw Matt Holiday step out of the box right away too. They they're they're natty little things. Well, you can see them all over the players. I, I think they're attracted to the black and yellow uniforms of the Pirates. Maybe maybe the yellow shoes too. Yes. Be my guess. It's a scientific educated guess from Al. Oh most definitely. It's a base hit for McCutcheon on the breaking ball. He hit it up the middle. Here's Delwyn Young. Got one of those government grants where I got $12 million to make that determination. And you're still doing games. I mean, you know, bugs. Yeah, I know. Attracted the black and yellow. A research paper. On it. it wouldn't surprise me with some of the people that you have run into and run with over the years. Lowell Palmer did a authored a book, The Metamorphosis of a Butterfly. He was a bullpen guy. Makes all the sense in the world. 1 0 pitch now. And a strike. Down by five runs. McCutcheon, the runner at first. See if the pirate players are more disturbed by the bugs than the Cardinals. Proving my point. Take it low. Two balls, one strike. Cardinals have out hit the Pirates eight to four, and they lead it five to nothing. Both teams have left five on. Both teams have committed one error. Boggs and Ross Ollendorf tomorrow. Pendiero and Mahalam on Sunday. Pitching matchups and again all three of these games right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Time call. See look at that watch. You didn't notice the pirate players are having more trouble in their black uniforms and the Cardinals with their grays. And you're sure about that, huh? Oh, absolutely. Here's a walk to Dylan Young. Asking for trouble here because this is Garrett Jones and the Cardinals' best post All Star break records. Here in 09, 30 and 14, you see in 2004, lost in that World Series to Boston, 42 and 43, what they did in postseason play as well. So this has been truly one of the best runs in Cardinal history in the post. Uh, all star break here. Oh, four is when they won 105 games. This is Jones who is one for two. Struck out back in the first and singled in the third. No bugs around Wainwright. No bugs up here. Ouch. Jones is four home runs last eight games. Ten of his 18 home runs have been in this ballpark. O2 pitch. Fought off down the right field line and drops in for a hit. Ludwick over to get it, cuts it off. Holds Jones to a single. McCutcheon scores easily and it's 5 to 1. RBI number 35 for Jones. O2 mistake and a rare mistake tonight by Wainwright. The breaking ball or a little cutter maybe, but nice play by. Ludwig as he got the ball back in quickly. Here's Millage 
Reached on an air by Schumacher in the third and doubled in the second. Runners at the corners with one out. Strike one. Runners in scoring position, 323 average, one home run and 10 RBIs. Village out to right. Ludwig is back near the wall, and he's got it. Runner will tag up. From third to the plate, score five to two. As Jones is back to the bag at first, so RBI for Millage is 13. Hanger right there, ball elevated. A lot more easier to hit. Line drive goes back out there. I think he thought he was a little close to the wall when he jumped, but makes the play on the sack fly. It's fencing out there on that wall. That could be dangerous when you jump like that. Sure. Get your foot caught. Bobby Valentine. Yep. That's who I'm thinking Los about. Los Angeles Angels. Here's Domit. Fastball up and away. I think they were just simply known as the Anaheim or California Angels back then. How about the Pirates here at home? They've actually played decent baseball, 35 and 29, but on the road. 18 and 50. Yeah. They they six games over 500. They can be a handful here. And that's what was really disappointing in their last home stand. They they you know had very exciting games with their in-state rival, the Phillies. They won two out of three, and then they promptly went on the road and lost lost seven straight. And it started out in Milwaukee where they lost their 20th consecutive game in Milwaukee. Ah. 20. 20 consecutive. And they in Milwaukee broke a streak, or the Pirates broke the streak earlier where it was about 17 or 18 straight that they had beaten them, you know, here in Pittsburgh and in Milwaukee. But 20 straight victories Milwaukee has at home against uh, the Pirates. Base hit into right. Jones stopping at second base. So Domit. His second single tonight. Third hit of this inning. Sandwiched around a walk and Dave Duncan to come out. But let's look at this location. As you know, it's an off-speed pitch. Watch Ludwig this time kind of stumbles a little bit, but Jones not trying to go to third. Not really no advancement, but he's losing his balance as he came in on that ball. Here you watch him come in here and a little stumble, but no advancement by Garrett Jones. Long visit there with the Wainwright and Duncan. You know, it's not often that in the National League that a player from a last place team wins the rookie of the year. We talked about the Pirates combination of Jones and McCutcheon. The last to do it on a last place team, Scott Rowland, back in 1997. There's been a few, and many times you just have to have an even better year or such more of a standout year for it to, to happen on a losing team. If you include the American League, there's been 15 players total that have won the award on a last place club. Strike to LaRoche. Who has struck out and also popped out to the catcher, Yadier Molina, tonight? Right handers came into play only hitting 217 against Wainwright. Nothing in two. He's elevated a few breaking pitches. And so it's good to see him finish off that breaking ball, but. See what he does here on 0 2. O2 mistake again, a base hit. Throw by Rasmus. Not in time. Almost caught Dolan as he was rounding second base, and the Pirates trying to make a game of it now as they put up three runs. 
Yeah, and it's almost the one question I got is why we keep on throwing breaking balls after breaking balls. Watch this throw. It's well, almost drilled Doman right in the stomach. LaRoche's 47th RBI. Brandon Moss 0 for 2, a strikeout, also a pop out at short. A long inning for Wainwright. Tying runs at first and second, go ahead, run at the plate here in the bottom of the fifth. Starts him off with a fastball there, but it seems like all these base hits have been on curveballs and cutters. Playing Moss to pull. He does down the right field line. Fair ball. One run is in. LaRoche being waved in. Relay to the plate. Not even a throw. Throw goes into third. They throw it away. And the Pirates will take the lead. Change up. A change up, but it's up over the middle of the plate, hit down in the corner. And see how Ludwig is playing all the way around into right center. And a second error by Schumacher. This one very costly as it gives them the lead. Six to five. They bat around. Here's the ninth man to hit, Ronnie Cedeno. So two RBIs on the play, the air on Schumacher, allowing that third runner to score. One one. So five base hits in the bottom of the fifth for Pittsburgh to go along with a walk. And the Pirates on top. Base hit in the center. Two pitches here in the fifth, and he only has the leadoff ground out, then the sack fly. And it's four consecutive base hits after two outs. Starting to stretch now in the Cardinals' bullpen. And a lefty is throwing. I believe that's Denny's Reyes. And it is. It is. Six hits in the inning, a walk, and six runs. One ball, one strike. And everything is up out over the middle of the plate. Get back to throwing that fastball and keeping people honest. You know, run something inside and get them out of the way. Back away. I want to remind folks that tomorrow we will not have a pregame show due to football coverage. And a swing and a miss. Big inning for the Pirates. First lead of the night at 6 5. Our Bud Light, what's on tap? Cardinals and Pirates tomorrow here from PNC Park. And we'll come your way at 6 o'clock. Now that is the start of our telecast. No pregame show. So tomorrow at 6, Cardinals and Pirates.
game two on Fox Sports Midwest. I'm sure that's going to be a great football game, but man, there are going to be some disappointed fans not getting to see that award winning pregame show. And you'll have the call with Ricky tomorrow. Ricky Horton. You and Ricky on Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Again, all the games right here on Fox Sports Midwest. And you'll be doing a little football, right? A little football tomorrow. Breaking ball, the strike to Brendan Ryan. You know, I had to down to a science how to hit a runner in the split second. He relaxed after a whistle. And speaking of Conrad Dobler, have yes. you had a chance to visit with him? I, I haven't for a while. I, I taught him how to be nasty. But now, I mean, Conrad has just had a string of bad luck and wish him, you know, he's. I can't count as high as is the knee surgeries he's had and several years ago just a innocent accident in his backyard his wife either fell out or, or trying to get into the hammock uh, six inches fall and became a quadriplegic you know, just a neat family you know, Conrad just with those knees and then got a very serious staph infection almost died from that. He's a, he's a gamer boy. And, you know, you remember you've seen him with coming over for the golf tournament when he had his knee all opened up as he got the staph infection and blocking his knee for about nine months. And he still is there smiling signing <laughs> autographs and <laughs> taking part in stories. Yep. Classy man. One and two the count on Brendan Ryan. One two pitch. And Ryan is swinging a miss as he throws the bat at it. Has to run to first and a strikeout. Third Cardinal to strike out tonight. Baseball this evening on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by AT&T. Switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T your world delivered. And by the new third pound Angus Burgers. They are here. Try one for yourself today. Only at McDonald's. So that's going to be it for Adam Wainwright. He came real quick as uh, he is knocked out and Alley doesn't go his normal six innings tonight. All right, his longest in the major leagues of 26 consecutive streaks or starts of at least six inning comes to an end. More importantly to Adam is that he's on the losing side. Now, he'd love to qualify for the win, but uh, you know, he's a team player. And We'll see his team battle from behind. So here is Thurston. Hits it in the air out to shallow left. Millage. Under it. Two outs. So quickly two outs and it's a brand new night for Kevin Hart with a one run lead. You know Schumacher would love to atone for a couple of errors tonight. Double and scored in the first. He walked to the second and also flied out to center. Six runs, all of them are earned. His ERA will take a beating. Walked a couple. A strike at the knees to Skip Schumacher. The Bugs clearly down on the field. Here are the players. Remember last time we were here, it was Matt Capps hitting Albert Pujols, and you're wondering if there would be any kind of carryover into this series this weekend. Good breaking ball there for strike two. So far, we haven't seen it. Haven't seen Caps yet either. Caps, the closer. One and two. Flashback, and here it was when Pools was hit back on August 9th. Wasn't there a home run right before that? Kind of what made it look a little suspicious. Right. Then we got that mean guy, Brad Thompson, who's still serving his suspension. He's throwing a pitch up and in. He got it reduced from three games to two games. 
the mean guy. Yeah, Brad can take part pregame, play catch, BP, but once the game rolls around, he is out of uniform. Not forgotten. Never forgotten. 2-2. Two -two. I talked to Brad about it last night when we got to Pittsburgh and just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, I'm not sure I really fully understand it, but you know, if I'm going to take it, this is the time to do it. Well, the, the unfortunate thing is when you, you do that, you have to pay your fine in order to get your hearing. So they already got your money. And usually by going through the process, you most times you get a, a reduction. Were you ever fined? Oh, I was fined a lot. By baseball or the club? By baseball. And I was telling him that I, I appealed the process one time. And fined for throwing at somebody, then got fined for, for fighting. And during the course, I asked the league president, Chuck Feeney at that time, I said, well, what was I supposed to do? The guy charged him out. He said, well, you were supposed to retreat behind second base and let the peacekeepers take care of that. And I said, well, Mr. Feeney, you already got my money. If you think that that's what I should have done, if I would have taken your advice, I might as well turn in my uniform because right. I would have no respect from the opposition, let alone my own players. Six is serious number. The Cardinals score six, and you get a 20-ounce coffee fountain of frozen drink for just a quarter the next day at On the Run at Mobile. Win or lose, Cardinals score six. You score 25-cent drinks at On the Run. Who are the, the uh, peacekeepers? Your teammates. So it <laughs> doesn't always work that way. Okay, but, but I mean, who would have been? Give me a couple of Simmons, I guess, would be one. No. He no. Would be, he'd be the. He would be the number two instigator. Okay. <laughs> who holds on deck? And here's Colby Rasmus. Now, there is the famous game where. I threw a pitch, a legal pitch, one with no batter in the batter's box, and then the next pitch with two batters stay on the right hand side of the batter's box, and the manager stood on home plate, and I delivered the next pitch. Somehow that started a fight. <laughs> Kobe fouls it back. Against the Cubs, and Ted Simmons, right after the pitch was made, came out of his crouch, popped Bill Madlock in the jaw. A really, really good 20 minute brawl. And when it was all said and done, I was pitching, Simmons was catching, Cardinal was the on deck hitter, Madlock was the hitter, Shad Crawford was the home plate umbar, and the Cubs manager, Jim Marshall, got thrown out for arguing. <laughs> all the players stayed in town. That was the old days. <laughs> yeah, things have changed a little bit. If you had that now, you'd have all kinds of suspensions and fines. Especially if you didn't get out on the field in time. <laughs> Ran the six with two outs and a runner at first. <laughs> Colby tonight 0 for 3. Reached on an air and scored the first. Rounded out to first and also rounded out to second. A rare start where Wayne Wright does not go five innings, rather six innings, excuse me. Especially when he's given a five run lead. Kevin Hart some credit. He stuck around in this ball game and was on the winning side of a 6-5 game. A lot of game left. And that's a base hit. All of a sudden, here come the Cardinals. With two outs, Pujols will be the hitter. Looked like Hart was going to sail through this inning and struck out Brian. He got Thurston to fly out for the first two outs. Schumacher the walk and now Colby going down to get that pitch for the base hit. Breaking ball coming down and or coming into him and down left handed hitter low ball hitter. Good piece of hitting going the opposite way. That walk is a killer that 
extended the inning with two outs. And Rasmus gets the hit, and here comes Albert. Pujols has popped out. He's flied out to center and singled and scored in the fifth. It'll be a pitching change as John Russell's going to go to the bullpen. Find out what Albert does against the new hurdle. So that's going to be it for Kevin Hart. He's through for the night. Runners at first and second. Pujols coming up with two outs in the Cardinals trailing by the score of six to five here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. This is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Danny Bautista, right hander, coming in to face Albert. St. Louis Cardinals the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services and Fox Sports Midwest have joined together to encourage young people not to smoke because once you start it's hard to stop. Strike out tobacco so we can all breathe easier. Call the Missouri Tobacco Quit Line 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Denny Bautista this season with just five appearances and he's been around for a while. He's pitched with Florida, Baltimore, Kansas City, the Rockies, Detroit. And last year he had 35 appearances for the Pirates all in relief. And last year he established career highs in every category, but non roster player this year was recalled from Indianapolis on August 15th. He's retired 17 in the last 20 batters he's faced in his first four games. So he hasn't faced Albert Pujols yet. One of these rare pirate pitchers that Albert is looking for his first hit against. 0 for 5. Runners at first and second, two outs. Pitch two pools. Fouled straight back. He's been going after the high pitch, but that one he had a more level swing and yes. he just missed it. Keisty now is 29 years of age. From the Dominican Republic. Here's the 0 1 to Pools. The check swing did not go. Did not go. One ball, one strike. Pools, one for three with a run score tonight. Kind of work on his mechanics right there, just trying to. It's really simple. You know how much tee time that Albert puts in and how he maintains that same swing all the time. But now there you need to remind himself. 1 1. Pool holes down the left field line. Did he get enough? It's gone. Home run for Pool holes. He's done it again at PNC Park. 22 home runs. And the Cardinals go back on top with his 43rd of the season. And it's RBIs 114, 115, and 116. Eight to six Cardinals. Only question would it would it be elevated enough to get out? Fastball, he's right on it, but it fouls off. Then the slider out of way, and then he gets a hanging breaking ball and just a line drive. Does he have enough altitude to get over the left field wall? Yes, he does. And Wainwright feels like he's kind of He's the pitcher of record, so he has a chance to pick up his 17th victory. But you know, in the back of his mind, he wishes he could, you know, kind of. He'll take it, but it's kind of like walking to the pay, you know, to the bank, you know, backwards. And the Cardinals with their third home run. That home run now puts him ahead of Joe DiMaggio on the all-time home run list. Just a line shot. Ralph Kiner next up. Is he about eight away from Kiner? Kiner is at 369. You see Adam and he's in line for this victory if the Cardinals hold on, but you know he's a little frustrated with that six runs he gave up in in the fifth. So seven of the eight runs charged to their starter hearts. But this is what you know, this is what we're talking about, this offense now. Many of the games since Holiday has arrived, it's been the pitching that has just carried the load. Matt is it, man. 
phenomenal start or stats playing with the Cardinals, but it's been the pitching. Waits on the breaking ball, but hits it to the second baseman. And Dellen Young puts him away. Albert Pujols. Batista, first man that he faces. Albert takes him deep. A three run shot. Cardinals in our game recap presented by Infinity. Matt Holiday would go deep earlier in this ball game. That was in the third. The Cardinals went back to back. Ludwig also with a home run is 19. And who holds the third home run of the night for St. Louis? A big one, a three run shot. And for Albert, that's home run number 43 and 116 RBIs. So now four back of Prince Fielder in the RBI department. And three ahead of Mark Reynolds in the home run department. Chevy called to the bullpen, presented by the good folks at Chevrolet. And here is Denny's Reyes, top of the lineup. McCutcheon, Young, and Jones got out in a hurry. <laughs> Just he knew his left fielder wasn't going to catch. Him. He didn't know if it was going to get over the wall as Reyes appearing for the 63rd time. He's got a chance to break uh, his career high of 75 said last season. Two and one. Reyes of course got the two year deal. Spring training this year from the Cardinals. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. That's where you really got to come in there and you've got to attack the strike zone. Saw how clutch the walk to Schumacher and what that resulted. Seemed like a very harmless, you know, last half inning, two outs, and then the walk to Schumacher, base hit to Rasmus, a three run bomb, and Here's a leadoff walk. Kevin Hart, the starter for the Pirates. Five and two thirds, nine hits, seven runs, walk three, and struck out three. Meanwhile, Wainwright on the other side, five innings, nine hits, six runs, all were earned. A pair of walks, and he strikes out five tonight, but does not get into the sixth inning. Ryan Reyes, because of Young, a switch hitter. Better from the left side, and then you have Jones, a left hand hitter, falling. Molina out to visit is Reyes is not throwing strikes. Now McClellan throwing in the Cardinal bullpen, and you know, Albert out there with a few words too is defense can't help you if you don't throw strikes. And that's what we talk about, you know, a club like the Pirates, you know, they they might have one bullet. They got the six runs, get back in the game, take the lead. But you just you, know, you just killed them with the, the three-run blast by Pools. But the walk put them right back in the game. They feel like they can compete again. Check on the runner at first. That's McCutcheon. Looked like he wanted to run. He has 15 steals and 18 attempts. You know, his natural side would be right handed, a little more power that way. was threatening in the top of the eighth inning they have a runner at third but they're two outs as the Mets are hanging on to a one nothing lead. One oh pitch and a strike one ball one strike. Cardinals with two runs in the first two in the third one in the fifth and then three on one swing of the bat by pool holes in the top of the sixth. Late with that swing. Looking now where Pujols ranks in just about every offensive category, he's in the top 10. He leads in home runs, runs, 
total bases on base percentage and slugging percentage extra bases quick move that time and the list goes on and on with what he means to this offense well, a lot of people feel that uh, he is the he's the front runner for his third MVP award and if you talk to some of the people that have a vote what they'll tell you is that they feel Albert's been consistent from day one where Howard has been up and down a little bit along the way uh, and especially what he did in the first half of the season with very little protection you know, they had the opportunity to pitch around him and his numbers were incredible they picked him off a throw to second and McCutcheon is out Let's see pools had to run to Reyes to shorten it up a little bit because of the speed of McCutcheon and then put the throw right on the bat. Just smart. You know, he's got the good throwing arm and it's accurate for a first baseman, but cut down the distance, get the ball quicker. He has that such a strong arm, he can throw on the run. He doesn't have to be stationary and he has that confidence, you know, to take chances. And if he doesn't do that, he's probably safe. One two pitch to Young. Got him. Strike out of Delwyn Young, and now this inning is completely changed. Absolutely. Not a very good at bat by Young as he took a lot of fastballs. And you might have thought that was outside, caught a, a little bit awkward. And this will be the last hitter that Reyes faces, and Tony's hopeful it's the final out of the sixth. So the leadoff walk erased when he's picked off. That's McCutcheon. Strikeout of Young as McClellan continues to get loose. And a swing and a miss by Garrett Jones. Chicago did tie the Mets at 1 1 and still batting in the eighth. Nearly every 11 at bats, this 28 year old rookie is going deep. It puts him on pace with McGuire, what he did back in 1987. Metri came in tonight with 18 home runs in 55 games, just over 200 at bats. And he had almost 1,950 at bats at just triple A. You know, for the same team, the Rochester Red Wings. And became favorite favorite uh, in that triple A spot and known as the legend. One and two the count. And a swing and a miss, and it winds up being a solid inning for Reyes following the leadoff walk. Ludwig leads it off, and we come back. Well, the Cardinals have used the long ball here tonight. They have three home runs, part of their eight runs, as Wainwright makes the start. He is in line for his 17th victory, but by his standards, he'll tell you he's disappointed, and Yachty trying to. Talk to Reyes about his innings there as he started out a little shaky walking the first man but he raced him out caught stealing and a pair of strikeouts. Ludwig is one of those uh, home run hitters and what a night he's had three extra base hits two RBIs and Batista who surrendered the three run home run to Pujols just uh, almost gave up another extra base hit to Ludwig RBI double. Back in the first, his 19th home run in the third, and a double in the fifth. So three for three for Ludwig. He's missing with the fastball. Ryan on the season. Remember, he got off to a great start, and then right here in this ballpark, he had the hamstring injury, missed a couple weeks, and then a very slow May and June. But he's picked up the pace. Production's been there pretty much all year. Like his average, a little higher, but 19 home runs, 83 RBIs. And when you start thinking about Pujols, Holiday, Ludwig in the middle, from three to five in this batting average, that's a that'll put a fear in a lot of right-handed pitchers. Get to Rosa going, keep on adding to it. Houston, they sit out there to center field. So Ludwig only lacks the triple from hitting for the cycle, and he's four for four. Brings in DeRosa and an RBI single in the fifth. 
certainly is Ludwig four for four, but every ball has been hit right on the nose. You're right. So two doubles, a home run, and a single. Here's DeRosa, who is grounded out to third, struck out, and has an RBI single in the fifth. We haven't seen him offensively as good as he can be, but that wrist is. Little tapper foul. Yeah, it's a little bit of a problem there, but he doesn't use an excuse. He told me he's getting a uh, memory missed. Sunday was a late scratch. Sunday missed. Monday was the off day. Didn't play on Tuesday. As he said, the inflammation is in there a little bit. Still taking anti-inflammatories, and we've been kind of wondering or trying to find a place where maybe they give him a cortisone injection. There's maybe a good example yeah. of a very tough pitch to swing at when your wrist is like that. Well, it's it's tough on anybody when you got a running fastball up and in on you, but you can see that awkward swing. And you used to always know one of the things with advanced scout that you want to know from him: Does somebody have a leg injury? Do they have a wrist injury? And if you have a wrist injury or hand injury, you want to pound them inside. There's a curveball pulled fair off the glove of the Roche. Fires to first, but no play. And the first two have reached. See how they score. It probably will be a base hit. And it is. But Roche had a real shaky start to the season in St. Louis. But his uh, defense is kind of toned down a little bit. And he's making. Fewer errors, but he almost threw one away there. Good thing Jones vacated the bag. It's kind of a it would buy his throw sure right is. there. They've already had one error that really cost him by their pitcher, Kevin Hart, as he fired to first and threw it away. Chance now for Yadi Molina. Singled, he's walked, he's also grounded into a double play. Squares to bunt, pops it foul. Two run game. Cardinals have scored eight runs, but Pirates have countered back with six. Well, those are big, big runs out there at first and second. Good bunt by Molina. Only plays to go to first, and the sacrifice is good. 3 4 on the sacrifice runners at first and second. Excuse me, second and third after the sacrifice by Molina. That was a nice piece there. He's getting all the congratulatories. He's playing team baseball. And it'll be a pitching change now with Rasmus Batista's night is through. Batista, first man he saw was Pools. Gave up the three run homer. He's also. Allowed a couple of base hits now in this seventh inning. Joel Hanrahan, former national, will come in for the Buckos. And he'll face Brendan Ryan when we return with runners at second and third. Top of the seventh, one out, runners at second and third. And the Cardinals, of course, with eight runs tonight. So get a 20 ounce coffee or frozen drink for 25 cents tomorrow at On the Run. Big reason why Albert Pujols. Pujols, a big night for the Cardinals with his three run homer and also a single and a run score. It's a two run score tonight. And here is Brendan Ryan. Ryan is grounded out to short. He's fly to center and also struck out. Joel Hanrahan, the new pitcher for the Buckos. Another guy with a very good arm that came over from the Nationals. He's pitched well for the Pirates. Infield is in and a swing and a miss by Brendan. Routed out to short. And he did have a runner on. And Hanrahan now appearing for the 61st time. His opponents are hitting 301 against him. That's his combined numbers with the Nationals. He's only allowed an earned run in four of his 26 games with the Bucks. And that's a base hit. Brendan Ryan delivers, and two runs will score. Ryan digging for two. 
on his way to second. He is out as his hand comes off the bag. But he drives in two. And the Cardinals lead now by four runs. That play goes 7 4. We've seen a lot of outfield assists this year for the Pirates. And it's an indication one, you're giving up a lot of hits, and two, a lot of people just running on him because they don't think that they're one accurate or have strong. He's safe there, but then his sliding, he goes around the bag and comes off the bag, and Young holding the tag on, and they get the out. So base hit, two RBIs, and the put out 7 4. Leo Green, the pinch hitter. Season numbers for Khalil at 205, and he's at 235 against the Pirates. Dr. Khalil today, you know, he was born here in Pittsburgh and stayed here until about five years of age and then moved down to Key West and still says he's got a lot of family that reside in this area. 3 0. Schumacher on deck. The umpire out at second base was in good position to make the call with the hand off the bag. Looking at the replay, couldn't tell if his hand did come off the bag. Talking about Angel? Angel. And a walk. So Hanrahan hasn't retired a man yet, but his defense has. Two RBIs for Brendan Ryan now at 30 on the year. Well, it seemed like about a month ago we were trying to get him into the teens. Chance for Skip now with two outs. And he'll slice one the other way. Millage over to make the catch on the run. Cardinals add to their lead. They've got 13 hits tonight, and it's 10 6. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals with 13 hits. And the new pitcher for St. Louis is Kyle McClellan. 56th appearance for Kyle. Lastings Millage. Big night for Albert Pujols in many ways. Big night for the offense in general, and it could be even bigger as I mentioned that the Cubs tied up the Mets. But as the Mets moved to the bottom of the eighth inning, they have added two runs, and they currently have the bases loaded and nobody out, and lead three to one over the Chicago in the bottom of the eighth inning. It could be a big pickup day for the Cardinals. Millage one for two on the night. Second base hit for Lastings Millage. All the little things that Pujols can do in a game. And let's just take a look at what he's done tonight. He's talking to himself there about staying back. It was right before the three run home run. <laughs> <laughs> it paid off. I think he stayed back on that one. And then that was after the walk that uh, Dennis Reyes issued. Right. And then he helped him out as the Reyes struck out two after Albert helped him out with that uh, caught stealing. As he took the, they picked off the runner at first. He caught the ball and then threw it down to Brendan Ryan for the, the out. That's hammered into deep right. Ludwig will look up. It's off the wall. Plays it perfectly. And fires into second base. Millage in there safely at third, but Ludwig could not play that any better in right field. And here come the Buckos. Bring the ball down and in, right in the dangerous spot. Just a line drive right off the wall. There's you see that perfect carom and return throw. Mets are now up 5 1. Still have the bases loaded and nobody out against the Cubs. Out to visit Dave Duncan. I don't like what they see here.
loose in a hurry. Two on and nobody out. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Andy LaRoche. McClellan came into this ball game with nobody on, but one thing we haven't given enough credit to Kyle is he has been unbelievable in inheriting runners not scoring. The best in the major leagues, only 8% have scored when he's entered a ball game. Only two of 26 best in the majors. It's a telling stat when you talk about a reliever. Well, it sure is. I mean, look at Batista. He came in with two men on and you know, Albert hits the three run home run the first batter he faced. That's so often that when you come in with men on base, it's what, the, what you, that first batter does determines whether it's a good outing or not. Up the middle, base hit. Three consecutive base hits. Ten to seven, Cardinals. So you can't take anything for granted when you're playing a club like this that play well at home. They have nothing to lose, so you don't want to play down to their level. And Yachty out to talk to Kyle, kind of regroup here a little bit. Mott will get a little more time to loosen up. And you know, Jason Mott wants to atone for what happened on opening day. Good point. Cardinals lost that game six to four. Jack Wilson would get to him on opening day. Brandon Moss runners at first and second and he'll represent the tying run Two run triple back in the fifth and a run scored DeRosa even with the bag over third and a big gap into left center field. Pirates are a good fastball hitting team, but just breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball. You've got to throw a good one. Because if you don't throw a good one, you know, that's a much easier pitch than your fastball to hit. Remember, Wainwright in his last start threw a ton of breaking balls against the Pirates, and we noted tonight he was doing the same. I mean, you know, they'll tell you that, okay, the Pirates are a good. Fastball hitting team. They should never be afraid not to throw a fastball. Just make sure you spot it where they can't hurt you. This could be two. Who holds to second? McClellan covering the bag at first and a big double play. Executed to uh, perfection there. Started by Albert. It'll go 3 6 1 on the double play. Albert ranges so far as right. He has great confidence in his throwing ability. Kyle gets over there. And once you practice in spring training, PFP, now watch Kyle. He'll look and check the runner and make sure that runner going from second to third doesn't come on home. And everybody has to do something. Let's watch Ludwig. You see him. He was playing out right center. Well, he starts moving in the direction. And if there's a an errant throw, he'd be in a position to back up. This is Cedeno, good pitch. So big, big double play there for the Cardinals. Started by Pujols, one ball, one strike on Cedeno. He can get out of this inning with just one run scored after the first three batters reach and that run already come in. He do a heck of a job. One and two. Talked about earlier, Sedano has been a very good hitter with runners in scoring position, bang over 400. Curveball, a swinging bunt. Sedano can run, but not outrun the gun of Yadier Molina. We played seven here at PNC Park. It's 10 to seven, St. Louis. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Smoothbush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Life. 
and by Bank of America. Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. Gorgeous night here in Pittsburgh. It's 10 7 St. Louis as we move to the top of the eighth. And the Cardinals will have two, three, and four. And a new pitcher is in and a lefty for the Buckos. The Matre. Appearing for only the fifth time. He's spent most of the year on the disabled list, rehabbing from uh, left shoulder surgery, arthroscopic surgery. A crowd tonight, 15,258. And a pitch taken outside by Colby Rasmus. Rasmus with a, you, know, you think about it, a key at bat to get on in front of Pujols to extend the inning for his three run homer. That's right, that was two outs. One ball, one strike, and fireworks night tomorrow. Must be a seller. It will be. Good. It always helps uh, the atmosphere. So we had 17 runs in this game, 25 hits, and three errors. You think about on the other side, the Cardinal fans and coming out over 40,000 plus that they are averaging. Haven't seen this in a while. As Colby spoils the pitch. One and two. And just the incredible run that Tony La Russa has had now here in St. Louis. Seven division titles, two National League pennants, and one world championship. Franchise leader in wins for the Cardinals. Strikeout of Colby to start the inning. Hardy's prime cut of the game. And this is Pujol's three run homer and his 43rd of the year. You know, Albert, as great as he has been, and he's been unbelievable, still looking for that first 50 home run campaign. Right, 06, his career high was 49. I have a feeling he's going to achieve that mark this year. Pick up his third MVP. Be three in the last five years. Two oh pitch. Get out of play. So Albert with his forty third home run, one hundred and sixteen RBIs, and the reaction of the players and the fans. Uh oh. Everybody's head turned left. And it got out in a hurry. 2 1 pitch to Albert. And the Cubs are about ready to lose. They trail 6 to 1 in the ninth inning, in New York. Houston has a big 7 0 lead against Philly. Since to Albert. Cincinnati is putting hurt on Atlanta. There's 3 to 1 in the bottom of the eighth down in Dixie. Colorado early has a 1 0 lead over Arizona, and Milwaukee is trying to make a statement against San Francisco. Milwaukee up to five leads uh, 2 to nothing. I believe Soup made that start. It's, it's early, it's two, but he's got a 2 0 lead. Holiday is homer tonight for the 11th time. Now with St. Louis. One out and a runner at first is Albert Pools. Strike to Matt Holiday. This would be win number 80 if the Cardinals can hold on this evening. That would be loss number 80 for the Pirates if the Cardinals can hold on. I'm going to go inside here on Holiday. They do hit his spot but doesn't get the call. American League wildcard it's Boston leading by three games over Texas Tampa Bay six back Seattle is eight out. Ooh. Austin trying 12 to one. And Texas is about ready to close out Baltimore and they're leading five one in the ninth. One and two the count to tighten that up a little bit.
Holiday with a strikeout in the first. Homer, as he and Ludwig went back to back in the third, flied out to right and also grounded out to second. Both starters didn't last very long. Wainwright five innings and Hart went five and two thirds. And a base hit left side for Matt Holliday on the 2 2 delivery. Cardinals have a great deal for all college students and staff. It's college nights, and they feature discounted outfield loge box seats for just $10. That's right, just $10. Next college night coming up Monday, September 14th. The Marlins in town. And you can get your tickets at sdlcardinals.com slash college. And again, outfield loge box seats for just 10 bucks. Good deal. Here's Ludwig. What a night he has had. RBI double. A solo home run. Doubled in the fifth and singled and scored in the seventh. His fifth career four hit game. Hit the ball hard each and every time. Pitch taken outside with Mark DeRosa on deck. Has he ever had a five hit game? We'll check that. The 1 0. And Ludwig smokes it out to deep center field. McCutcheon back, looks up, out of here. A three run homer for a five hit night and it's his first of his career a five hit night and five RBI's on the night first career five hit game for Ryan Ludwig double in the first homer in the third double in the fifth single in the seventh and a three run homer here in the eighth. Wow, what a night. 20 home runs, 86 RBIs after this blast. He is seeing the ball well, driving the ball to. And tonight, this ballpark can't contain him. DeRosa, left center. Millage won't get it. That will roll to the wall. Cardinals having some fun offensively here tonight. It's three consecutive hits for DeRosa as he's now three for five in this game. That's 16 hits for the Cardinals. Just a few days ago, we were talking about we haven't really seen this offense click the way it can. And they went out and scored 10 runs. But doing a little bit more tonight as they have 13 runs on 16 hits. And I don't see the white flag yet. <laughs> no. Brad Henderson. <laughs> I liked it better when I was in the Cardinals dugout. But Pirates head trainer. Got a lot of friends on the Cardinals team, but right now he's not happy with them. One out runner at second. Here is Molina. And this happens every time Mike Matheny travels with the ball club. This would be the first time, correct? Yes. Well, sure. every time. Yeah. are trying to make a game of it. They have one out but the base is loaded and still trailing six to two in the ninth. So 12 times Pujols, Holiday, Ludwig and DeRosa have reached base tonight. Middle of the lineup done some damage. You had a pretty good chance to win then don't you? Yes you do. Outside three no. Last time up Molina had that big sacrifice that Added the lead a little bit, and the three run home run this inning is giving a little more cushion. And a walk to Molina. And we're going to have a 
pitching change. So runners at first and second still only one out. Cardinals top of the eighth. That's it for the lefty. And Brendan Ryan due up. It's 13 to 7. Redbirds. Steven Jackson is 28th appearance of the season. And an ERA that's over four. The Cardinals 16 hits tonight. They played at 13 runs and trying to add to it right now. Jackson was this is his third stint with the ball club as he began the season with Scranton Wilkes-Barre. That's AAA affiliate of the Yankees. And he was claimed uh, off waivers from the Yankees on May 18th. So look inning by inning what's happened. Cardinals two in the first two in the third one in the fifth three in the sixth two more in the seventh eight in this or rather three in the eighth and a lot of hits that in game box score Middle of the lineup highlighted by Ryan Ludwig's five hit night. Runners at first and second for Brendan Ryan. They have a pretty good offense tonight when you score in six different frames and five of the six are crooked numbers. And foul ball. See that Brendan wears that protective gear around his left ankle. 0 oh and 2. June 10th at Florida, the Cardinals scored 13 runs that day. They've got 13 here tonight. 0 oh 2. Popped up. Shallow left center. McCutcheon makes the catch. And Kia will be the pinch hitter. Cardinals' magic number is down to eighteen. Cubs lose 6 2. And Keel up there hacking and fouls it back. A very streaky season for Rick and Keel. He was only 2 for 13 on the homestand. Two outs, two on. And Keel base hit into right. Here comes DeRosa. And there's no throw to the plate. It goes to second base. Ricky and Keel picks up the RBI. It's 14 to 7 Cardinals. I was say it's been a streaky year for Ann Keel, but he seems like he's swinging the bat better now. <laughs> so he catches the ball to his liking, just a line drive over second base, picks up the RBI, and Cardinals now have a season high 14 runs. Schumacher will be the ninth batter this inning for the Redbirds. He's been on base three times, a couple of walks, and also he doubled, started the game, and came around to score. This is outside by Steven Jackson. Would figure with these drafts that the Pirates have had and high picks, at some point they would walk into a franchise type player. And that just has not happened. Well, in many cases, and I think it's it has changed with new ownership and new direction from a top, is you know, they, they didn't sign the best players. When they had the best picks, they didn't sign the best players. It was all about who they could sign and at their price tag. 
Schumacher into center. McCutcheon makes the catch. Cardinal strand two. But add to their lead. Four runs. 14 runs, new season high. 14 7, St. Louis. 17 hits for the Cardinals. They lead it 14 to 7. Five of the 17 off the bat of Ryan Ludwig. And the new pitcher for the Cardinals, Jason Mott. 60th appearance. Opponents hitting 274 against him, but he does have that high ERA, 5.36. Finishing up his warm up tosses here to start the bottom of the eighth. And let's just hope that uh, Jason Mott gets a chance to pitch a couple innings here. Did that the last time. A couple innings on. Second of September, picked up his 18th hold. But you know, tomorrow you have uh, definitely Wellemeyer and Brad Thompson will be off his suspension, so you got two more fresh arms down there in that bullpen. That might kind of stretch out and figure something out. This is Vasquez, Ramon Vasquez, 242 hitter with one home run. Outfield is straight away, and here we go at the bottom of the eighth. Strike by Mott. Only innings the Cardinals have not scored in the second and the fourth here tonight. 0 1 pitch. 96. 0 and 2. Talked about it uh, many times, but opening day when Mott was the anointed closer and really struggled, but he was only throwing 91 92. And they were looking for the fastball. You start getting up there above uh, 95, and we've seen him more now 97, 98. You know, that's a little different story, even if you know the fastball's coming. 1 2 pitch and a ground ball past Schumacher into right. Base hit for Vasquez. And the top of the lineup in McCutcheon. Some that felt, why would you give up Nate McLeod? You know, when you just signed him to a fair contract for both sides, they knew McCutcheon is their center fielder of the future. He could have kept McLeod and moved him to left or right. A lot of fans were wondering about that. But if you talk to the Pirates personnel, they'll tell you they feel that they've got a good return with some highly touted prospects from Atlanta. Yeah, particularly they, they feel the star in the making is that Hernandez thing. Another center fielder. Gorky Hernandez. And they think he'll be quite a star. But you've seen a lot of uh, people that have Hall of Fame resumes in eight ball that don't quite make it. And you have a proven in McLeod. Yes. And you got proven and at least McCutcheon was a little more advanced and Obviously they made the right choice to give him playing time but your point being that you, know, you never can you get three outfield positions they can all move around and play the same outfield. You also had a chance to keep Bay. I mean think about that outfield if you had Jason Bay McCutcheon and McLeod. That's a good outfield. And I guess in their mind is they're they're still not going to be equal to the Cardinals or the upper echelon so they might as well develop the young players and then they kind of come all together but they better get some pitching. 2 2. And a strike out of McCutcheon. Couldn't pull the trigger. So the first down recorded here in the bottom of the eighth. It's a fast ball and it has a movement in and McCutcheon just couldn't pull the trigger as you said. He might have thought it was low, but I think he just was fooled by the pitch. Delwyn Young. This atmosphere is brutal, but <laughs> as a player, you can't worry about the atmosphere. You have to come out and play. No, and that's why it's a little easier for the Cardinals because they're playing for something. Can they turn two? Mott to second. The turn by Brendan Ryan sends us to the ninth. We'll see Pujols one more time. 
at PNC Park going to the ninth inning. Cardinals winning a slugfest 14 7. Coming up immediately after the game on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, Rick Horton and Jim Hayes standing by back in the studio. They'll be talking about Albert Pools' uh, big night pounding the Pirates. Brian Ludwig, talk about big nights. How about the five RBIs, the two home runs, and the five for five night so far? And it's the Hungo Award night. Dan and Al be handing that out a little bit later on during the post game show. U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, guys. We'll see you then. All right. Thanks, Pat. So here we go. Ninth inning rolls in here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Chris Buchak, his eighth appearance. ERA uh, close to 14. Ten innings of work. He has struck out nine, but walked seven. On the minor league contract with the Pirates after a career with the Angels organization. Did get to the big leagues over the course of three or four years and three and seven. ERA over six and 77 career appearances for the Angels. 2 0 the count. Julio Lugo has moved to the on deck circle. Pinch hit for Albert. And a broken bat. That bat is flying towards the seats, and thankfully, it doesn't land in the seats. First out. So Lugo pinch hitting for Pujols. Pujols on base three times tonight and had the crushing blow in the sixth with a three run homer. You get the idea that uh, Molina will end up at first base and Rue will catch. And it looks like. Uh, Jason Mott probably only going to throw the one inning as Wellemeyer is warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. All smiles in that Cardinal dugout tonight. 14 to 7, they lead it here in the ninth. Next to Lugo. Cubs have already lost, so the Cardinals hold on and win this game. They can move 11 and a half in front with what 26 to play. Magic number would be down to 17. Combination of Cardinals wins, Cubs losses to 17. 1-1 one, one pitch. Lugo had the leadoff homer. One out, nobody on. One and two, the count on Lugo. Here it comes. Up the middle, the pitcher is able to knock it down, sliding young, and he'll make the play. So one, four, three on that play. Now, when you don't have your luck going with you, things like this happen. Basically, gets taken away as the pitcher deflects it, slows it down. And and Young able to gobble it up and throw out Lugo. And Troy Gloss now will hit for Holiday. So the big boys are going to get a lot of time off in this game. One inning. Swing and a miss by Gloss. Saw him double yesterday. So I think uh, if LaRue comes in to to catch, Cardinals will deplete their bench. Strike two. Two to Troy Gloss. Check swing and he held up. One and two. It's the pine tar from his bat on his jersey. One two pitch. And Gloss down on strikes. 14 to 7. Singles. 
14 to 7 and Todd Wellemeyer will try to finish off the game. Number of changes for the Cardinals. Numbers on Wellemeyer primarily as a starter this year. Bonin's hitting 325 against him. He had a couple rehab starts and find his role probably now in the bullpen for the rest of the season. Lugo stays in the game. He's playing second base. Troy Gloss stays in the game. He's at first base. They didn't uh, didn't go to Molina and put Molina at first base because Tony was worried. He had already used his emergency catcher. So he couldn't have Molina play first and Rue out there. You know who his emergency catcher is, don't you? Mott. Yes, Jason Mott. Player of the game, no surprise here. Cardinals outfielder Ryan Ludwig. Five hit night. Couple of home runs. And he's our player of the game presented by Budweiser. Five RBIs tonight. Numbers are getting better and better for Ryan Ludwig. As it's been a frustrating year for him, but you sure wouldn't know it. He's a real professional and you know he wishes he'd be playing on a more frequent basis, but you wouldn't know it if you talk to him. You know, he just keeps a good positive head and and uh, real team player. So 86 driven in for Ludwig this year and 20 home runs. Came in hitting 266. Five hit night. That's on the way up. Garrett Jones, a couple of singles. 2 0. Important for Wellemeyer here to show that he can can get some outs. And, you know, in many ways, I think he's fighting for a, a spot on that playoff roster. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. We'll let Tony not uh, talk about it, but we will. I'm with you, Al. I think this team is headed to postseason I, I play. I think that uh, there's, <laughs> I guess, uh, put it this way we think they're incapable of losing this league. Now, Tony may think they still could, but we do not. Almost copped it up in 06. Now they're weak, <laughs> they would have been in trouble. Yes. But they got it together in postseason. And and they were the best team in postseason, and that's why they got their 10th world championship. It's a low strike call in favor of Todd Wellemeyer, so he'll take it. Good piece of framing by Molina at the expense of Jones, but interesting. I guess, you know, Troy Gloss kind of got the impression that. He called the third strike on himself as the home plate umpire wasn't ready to call it. And well, when he walked off towards the dugout, he said, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. Lastings Millage, two for three. 1 0 pitch. Taken low, two balls, no strikes. I mean, I'm not sure the umpire was going to punch him out. Speaking of Troy Gloss, and I was kind of watching the pitcher. He looked like he was ready to receive the ball again yeah. and make another pitch. The 2-0. Remember, this is one of the problems with Wellemeyer is falling behind. Three balls and no strikes. Fourteen seven game and you know, that's little things like that that you, know, you just got to show Tony and Dave Duncan that you can be helpful down the stretch and now walking people it's not the, the way to do it. Almost three for four in this game three singles.
Wins the count one and one. Todd had that on the DL with the elbow strain. Made a couple rehab starts this week and back here deemed ready for relief duty. Out the ground, line drive out to Rasmus and in his glove for the second out. So 28 straight games without losing ground in the standings. It was unbelievable when the Cardinals had the 20 and 6, 29, excuse me. Yeah, 20 and 6 record in, in August. Every, all six of those losses, the Cubs lost. So That's major league record since divisional play. Yeah, and it's carried over here in September, but Cubbies already lost. The Cardinals are on the verge of a victory. And 11 and a half game lead. LaRoche, the hitter, one ball to no strikes, two outs and a runner at first. Millage, the runner at first, and playing behind him. And the Cardinals would have a 11 and a half game lead over the Cubs. 25 and a half game lead over Pittsburgh, but they still wouldn't be eliminated. And their tragic number would be down to two. Ah. Hmm. I explain the tragic number to our new viewers. 17th consecutive losing season. They're two away. That's their tragic number, tragic. not their magic number. Three and one. And Myers throwing 16 pitches, 10 balls. And a walk. So first and second with two outs. Problems that Wellemeyer's had this season, the lefties just crushed him. Slider right there to get ahead. So they've hit one around 350, or I think it's even higher than that. But Get out of play. Two strikes. Ross had a two run triple back in the fifth inning. Bad throw there. That was by Schumacher, right? Yes. The 0 2. Good block by Molina. I always like to see that you know, down to the end of a ball game and catchers tired and yet it still goes down and blocks that ball in perfect fashion. San Francisco is tied that Milwaukee 2 2 and threatening still in the sixth. Another one two pitch by Wellemeyer. Here it comes. Popped up. And that'll get out of play. Into the seats it goes.
Pirates down to their final out, and Willemeyer wants a word with Matheny. Matheny, I'm sorry, Matheny, Molina. Mike Matheny is on the trip. Al, it's been a long night. <laughs> it's okay. Well, I left St. Louis at the house at 5.30 this morning. It's been a long day. One and two the count. And this has popped up. DeRosa is over. It's playable. He's got it, and the Cardinals win it. 14 to 7, our final tonight here in game one. And a five hit night, five RBIs for that man, Ryan Ludwig. More coming up. It's the post game show next on Fox Sports Midwest. The Cardinals bury the Pirates 14 to 7, their magic number now 17 because the Cubs lost Rick Horton. And I are here to break this one down. Rick, uh, season night, 14 runs for the Cardinals. Ryan Ludwig, a huge night. Lots to talk about. Yeah, if you like offense, you love this game. The Cardinals' offense was outstanding tonight. Four home runs in the middle of the lineup. Ryan Ludwig was the hitting star. But Pujols had a huge hit in this game as well. More from Rick Horton coming up. Plus, after a successful nine-game homestand, the Redbirds hit the road for six. Could they get what they want in the convenience store? That is PNC Park Plus. Adam Wainwright back on the mound tonight, looking to lock down his Cy Young frontrunner status. We'll break down his night. Plus, we'll take you back to Pittsburgh for play reaction and Tony LaRusso talks and a look back at the top moment from 2007. Happy birthday, Beyonce. If you want to watch a show that's going to be positively bootylicious, stick around for U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. <laughs> 